Welcome to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today we'll be walking you through the top five neighborhoods that Pittsburgh has to offer. And make sure you watch until the end because we're saving the best view for last. And, and we're, we're going, going after it right, right now. now. What's up guys, this is Riley Madden and Kirsten Madden with EXP Realty right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If this is your first time to our channel and you want to know everything about working, eating, sleeping, living, playing right here in Pittsburgh, then start by tapping that subscribe button and click that little bell so you're notified every time we come out with a new video. We honestly get so many reach outs from people relocating here and we absolutely love it. So if you're even thinking about moving to Pittsburgh, make sure you start by giving me a call, shooting me a text, sending me an email, or even DMing me on social media. However you wanna get a hold of me, we've got your back when making a move to Pittsburgh. Our first top Pittsburgh neighborhood is Skrill Hill. Skrill Hill is located only 10 minutes from downtown Pittsburgh and it's an easy commute as well. You can either hop right onto the parkway and that will lead you directly downtown. Or to avoid potential traffic, you can hop right onto Fifth Avenue, and then that will take you right down to Bigelow Boulevard. The main two streets in Skrill Hill are Forbes and Murray Avenue. This is where you see all of the different businesses and the independent food merchants. Typically, Squirrel Hill traffic is not bad compared to other areas of Pittsburgh, but if you do see some congestion, it will be along these two roads, and typically will be during lunch hours or after work. Squirrel Hill is rated number four of best neighborhoods to live in, and also has an a rating on Niche.com. As you can tell, it is split up into two different sections. You have North and South. South resides around 15,500 people, and in the north there is about 11,400 people. It is right in the middle of two of Pittsburgh's largest parks, so you already know it's going to be beautiful. Let's go take a tour of Skrill Hill. The most beautiful nature here in our city, and look at what you get still. Since you're surrounded by Pittsburgh's two largest parks, Shenley and Frick Park, Frick Park we are at right now. Two of these parks, they're huge. They are covered with mature trees, very opened. A lot of families come here, a lot of kiddos. It's amazing. This is the most suburban feel you're going to get, but only being five minutes from downtown, which makes it very convenient. That's why it's very popular for families. It has that community feel, and it really feels like you're in the suburb. Squirrel Hill's business district is quite impressive. It consists of 282 different businesses, mostly within walking distance from each other, and employs over 2,900 people. We are currently on Forbes Avenue, which features eateries including Aladdin's Eatery, Thai and Noodle, Pizza Bellino, Ramen Bar, Starbucks, and Commonplace Coffee. And it features businesses such as Avalon Exchange, Little Shoes, Bike Tech Pittsburgh, Games Unlimited, and Massage Envy, and of course more. are Forbes and Murray Avenue. Right now we're on the sidewalk of Murray Ave. This is where you want to go when you want to grab a bite to eat, coffee with friends, or maybe even an adult beverage. Murray Avenue is directly off of Forbes. 
It is filled with many unique shops where you can truly find anything you're looking for here. Whether you're going grocery shopping, looking to try a bakery, going to your local dentist, looking for a cup of tea, or even some fine wine and good spirits, it is all along Murray Avenue. Some local businesses include Pamela's, Manor Theater, Tea Swirl Crepe, Eden Park, Giant Eagle, and Glutiny Bakery. And we can't forget about two of Pittsburgh's most popular pizza shops, Alios and Minios, where the debate still continues on which one's better. Grill Hill North and South have great livability scores on Niche.com. North's is 86, while South is 89. Typically, you see a vast amount of students living in Skrill Hill due to the nearby colleges Chatham and Carnegie Mellon. You do see a lot of older people, a lot of families here, and a large part of the Jewish community. Squirrel Hill is the most ethnically diverse neighborhood in Pittsburgh and is also the largest. The median home value in Squirrel Hill South is around $323,700, while the median rent here is around $1,100. The median home value in Squirrel Hill North is around $472,221 while the median rent here is around $1,647. Although pricing is on the higher side here, it is definitely possible to find affordable living. Since there is a large price gap with the housing, you could find a great home anywhere from the $200,000 range all the way up to the multi-millions. You tend to see many detached homes here, many larger and unique homes which really gives it a sense of character and a touch of charm as well. There are many private parts of Skrill Hill where the homes are very sprawled out and it compares just like a suburban neighborhood, but then again, there are the tighter roads such as this one. So a fun fact about Skrill Hill is most of the homes here were originally triplexes and duplexes and they're converted into single family. So a lot of these homes look very large different architectures. It's very fun to walk around and all the different neighborhoods. It's absolutely beautiful here. When I think about Squirrel Hill, I think about the perfect mixture between nature and overgrown large trees and city living. Our next top location is Shadyside. Shadyside is only 15 minutes to downtown Pittsburgh and is neighbors with Squirrel Hill North, Point Breeze, East Liberty, Bloomfield, and North Oakland. You can easily get downtown from Shadyside either by taking 5th Avenue or you could take Bomb Boulevard which leads you down Bigelow Boulevard. The main three roads in Shadyside are Ellsworth Avenue, South Highland Avenue, and Walnut Street. While these streets are separated, they are all in close proximity for either a short drive or a brief walk. Since Shadyside is very walkable and tucked away on the east end of Pittsburgh, traffic here is minimal. You will see some hold up on South Highland Avenue and some on Ellsworth, but really not bad compared to the other areas of Pittsburgh and only occurs during rush hour. Shadyside has an a quality of living rating from Niche.com and also an exceptional living score of 82% which ranks 91% better than other areas. It is called home by over 14,300 people. Let's go take a tour. Shadyside is an immaculately kept up, very welcoming and updated neighborhood. This again compares to a suburban neighborhood due to the many tree-lined streets, the amount of space here and the quietness. 
There is actually a nonprofit community organization here named the Shadyside Action Coalition that started in 1973 and plays a big role in keeping Shadyside a thriving neighborhood. Its main purpose is to preserve values and laws, neighborhood safety, planning and zoning, quality of life, preserving character while actively being involved with future development. People absolutely love Shadyside's business district because it is so unique and has such a wide range of shops. Here we have Ellsworth Ave popped up on Google Maps. So Ellsworth is really a shopper's paradise. It is packed with locally owned art galleries, restaurants, salons, and retail destinations. Some restaurants include Stacked and Soba. Businesses include Hey Betty and Eons, which are both vintage clothing stores. Salon 5844. Pedagogy, which has many innovative toys and treats and even does Friday night art walks. Shadyside has over 50 dog-friendly businesses and it is a very dog-friendly place. Walnut Street is one of the most popular attractions in the area. It is filled with upscale shopping, fine dining, and private boutiques. Walnut Street features many brand names including Banana Republic, Gap, Sephora, and Apple. It also includes many restaurants and bars including Pamela's Diner, which has the best breakfast, Mario's Saloon, Still Cactus, and Shady Grove. Next we're in Shadyside at Shady Grove. Can I get a whoop whoop? Woo -woo! Woo -woo! <laughs> we're here at Shady Grove right in Shadyside. Look at these salads. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Walkable and everything is so convenient. We, we come here all the time for anything we need. What I like best, multiple fitness studios they have. Anywhere from bar to solid core to LA Fitness, Pilates, you name it, they have it here. And if you need the gear, no worries, Lululemon or Athletica. This is the place to be for young, hip people that want to look good, eat good, and live right. Just grabbed a coffee at Coffee Tree Roasters. Really good shop. Pittsburgh has so many coffee shops, which is great for us hard workers. Cheers. Cheers. South Highland Avenue features several upscale design and furniture stores, such as Weiss House and Penn Hollows. It also has many great local restaurants and cafes, including Bird on the Run, Urban Tap, Millie's Homemade Ice Cream, and Atta Coffee. Also on South Highland is the entrance to East Liberty's Retail Complex, which features your local grocery store, Whole Foods, Fine Wine and Good Spirits, Starbucks, and Deca Lash. The people who you see living in Shadyside are typically employees of universities and hospitals, physicians, young professionals, graduate students, and younger families. The median home value in Shadyside is $371,444, while the median rent here is around $1,285. Shadyside has the most impressive housing in all of Pittsburgh. The homes here were built prior to 1960 and are very unique with so much detail and character to them. The homes in Shadyside are quite expensive, so if you're looking to move to the area but on a budget, you might want to consider renting. There are many apartment buildings, condos, and townhomes for rent in the area. Overall, Shadyside has a great variety of homes that are all very well kept up. Homeowners here do tend to have room for parking, which is a huge highlight being in the city. Now we're on one of the main roads in Shadyside. This is where you're going to find most of the apartment buildings, condos, lofts. 70% of the people who live here actually rent, but they're mainly young professionals or college students. Still gives it the calm ambiance. High end living, this is the place to go. Not only are you getting beautiful apartment complexes, but you have the great downtown area of Shadyside. Anything from Lululemon, Rolex, 
Kendra Scott, you name it, all the stores are right there at your disposal and all in walking distance. No driving needed. So if you're moving to Pittsburgh and you don't want to have to get a car, this is the area to be. What I love about Shadyside is the individuality. You will not see any home that is the same. This is something that you can't say for every neighborhood in the Pittsburgh area. We have a lot of new construction, which has a lot of positives, but if you're looking for that home that's different from all the rest, Shadyside is where you want to go. Our third top Pittsburgh neighborhood is Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville borders the Allegheny River and is northeast from downtown Pittsburgh. It is about an eight minute commute to downtown. You can either cross on the 40th Street Bridge and 28 will lead you directly downtown. Or you can take Liberty Avenue straight downtown as well. You are surrounded by some pretty cool neighborhoods in Lawrenceville, including the Strip District, Bloomfield, and Stanton Heights. In Lawrenceville, you have the 40th Street Bridge, which takes you right on to 28, which is a major highway that will lead you downtown, north, east, south, and west. So it definitely is a big deal having that quickly at your disposal in Lawrenceville. The main road in Lawrenceville is Butler Street. Butler Street features Lawrenceville's impressive business district. It is also home to Allegheny Cemetery, as well as Arsenal Park. Lawrenceville has a grade A rating on Niche.com, and some say it is comparable to New York by giving it the nickname the Brooklyn of Pittsburgh. Traffic does get bad here, especially during rush hour and when coming along these bridges on 28 and on Butler Street. Being very trendy, modern, and hip, it is also one of the largest waterfront neighborhoods in the region. Let's go take a tour. So Lawrenceville has gotten a ton of hype recently. It's actually split up into three different sections. So you have upper, central, and lower Lawrenceville, but mainly treated as one big neighborhood. It's actually one of the largest in Pittsburgh with a population of over 12,000 people and still rapidly growing. In 10 years, Lawrenceville has been completely renovated. Anywhere from the restaurants, the shops, the homes, you see a lot of projects still going on in the area, but it has made it a very young, trendy, and hip place to live. <laughs> I told George he needs to start taking me out to eat here because there's a lot of nice places. <laughs> Butler Street is a regional destination due to the many unique shops and high quality businesses there as well. You have premier art, live music and dining, a great nightlife scene that has grown tremendously, a single screen movie theater, a pinball cafe, and a bowling alley, all within two blocks from each other. There is a ton of food on Butler Street, including restaurants such as Condado, some modern gastropubs such as The Abbey and Industry Public House, upscale bakeries such as B52 Cafe, which is vegan, Natural, Millie's, and even some food trucks. There are several coffee shops in Lawrenceville, especially along Butler Street, including Espresso A Mono, Inkwell Coffee, Tonic Coffee, Constellation, and the Pittsburgh Juice Company. There's also a good amount of nightclubs, cocktail lounges, trendy breweries, and wine bars as well. And we can't forget about the boutique shops, ranging from clothes to home goods to some of the best thrift shops in the city. Here you'll see Arsenal Bowl. This is actually the oldest bowling alley in Pittsburgh, and it's a really cool find if you have time to stop in. Right on Butler. we have the Giant Eagle headquarters. It actually was voted as one of the best headquarters to work for, for employee morale.
The people you see living in Lawrenceville is definitely the younger crowd. So you have young professionals, entrepreneurs, students, people employed on Butler and Penn Avenue, and also people employed downtown and in Oakland, which are the two largest employment centers in the region, due to the such easy access in getting there. The median home value in Lawrenceville is around $241,000 while the median rent here is around $1,045. 40% of the people who live here own, while 60% are renters. Since Lawrenceville's went through its extensive revitalization period, there are a ton of new apartment and townhomes that sit adjacent to the older homes here. Now down these roads in Lawrenceville is where you're going to find a ton of row homes. Lawrenceville is very notorious for the row homes. The median home value here is around $241,000 and it just keeps on growing. Lawrenceville has seen a very tremendously high appreciation rate for their housing. Rent around $1,050, so pretty comparable to the rest of Pittsburgh. In addition to the modern historic row homes you'll see throughout Lawrenceville, there are also a lot of loft and apartments for people to rent or purchase. They're going to be very modern and very new, along with a bunch of amenities, and I think that's really what brings people in is the pools and the game rooms and everything they have to offer in those lofts and apartment buildings. Our fourth top Pittsburgh neighborhood is Bloomfield. This neighborhood, again, is only 10 minutes to downtown Pittsburgh. It's an easy commute. You can either take Bigelow Boulevard or Liberty Avenue straight downtown. It is neighbors with Shadyside, East Liberty, Garfield, Lawrenceville, and Polish Hill. It's a very accessible area to several top neighborhoods in the city, including downtown. Bloomfield is very walkable. Catching public transit is easy due to Liberty Avenue, and there are also dedicated bike lanes throughout the neighborhood. Bloomfield has a grade A rating on Niche.com and a population of over 8,887 people. Let's go check it out. One of the best places to raise a family and one of the best places to live for young professionals you're only 10 minutes from downtown Pittsburgh, but you have this beautiful suburban hill. In Bloomfield, which is actually just a strip of like green land going down. This is where you see people walking their dogs, people going for jogs. You could just run through the green circle. There's not many parks in Bloomfield, but Bloomfield, if you want the family friendly convenience and just the community feel, then this is the place you're gonna wanna be. Friendship Park is a cute little roundabout styled park in the neighborhood. You often see staff and patients from West Penn Hospital coming over here as well as others in the area with children and pets. Liberty Avenue offers a wide variety of different businesses and services here. They have everything from churches to hospitals, restaurants and bars, supermarkets, tanning and hair salons, gift shops, card shops, gyms, thrifting, and even some bookstores. There are many different things to eat here, including Chinese food to Thai food to bar food to Italian food and Mexican food. Some independent food merchants include Chantel's Cheese Shop, Patty Cake Bakery, Aldi's, Italian Food Center, and the Community Supermarket. There are also some top-notch Italian restaurants and pizza joints that contribute to its nickname, the Little Italy of Pittsburgh, mainly due to the influence the Italian members had on the community. Overall, the main highlights of Bloomfield are its accessibility anywhere you need to go, its independent food merchants, and 
the walkability, anything you need is on basically Liberty Ave or Penn Ave. The employment here is great, strong community feel, which is a great thing whenever you're so close to the city and it's hard to find. The main employer in the area is the West Penn Hospital. A big highlight of Bloomfield is there are many great hospitals nearby, including areas as Shadyside and Lawrenceville. You typically see a lot of families living here, a lot of children, residents that have dogs, people employed at the hospitals and nearby universities, and then also people employed in Oakland and downtown again just because of the easy commute there. You also will see small business owners living here as well. The median home value in Bloomfield is around $228,897. And the median rent is around $952. 69% of the people who live here rent, while 31% own. The affordable pricing definitely does bring demand to the area, especially with the great accessibility it has and the booming business district. You will see a ton of compact row homes here, just like Lawrenceville. But then blocks away, you will see large Victorian homes that are set back from the tree-lined streets. You will also find a ton of apartment buildings, townhomes, and lofts for rent in the area. If you want a luxury loft, luxury townhome, they have a ton of options as well. And if you even wanted to stay in the hundred thousands or lower, there's tons of options in Bloomfield if you did some slight renovations where you can make it a great house. Our last top neighborhood is Mount Washington. Mount Washington is directly south from downtown Pittsburgh and it borders the Monongahela River. It is only nine minutes to downtown Pittsburgh. You can get there by either taking the Liberty Bridge or Fort Pitt Bridge. It also gives you quick access to Saul Mill Run Boulevard, which takes you south, north, and west. Mount Washington is a very desirable location, being that it's only minutes from downtown, south side, north shore, south hills, and station square. That being said, getting to work or anywhere is really a breeze. Mount Washington is known for its panoramic views of the city and also its two inclines, the Monongahela and the Duquesne. The main two roads here are Grandview Avenue and Shiloh Street. The main spot for bad traffic in the area is definitely going to be across Liberty Bridge. Mount Washington is a beautiful place. It has a A- rating on Niche.com. Let's go take a tour. At the top of the hill on Grandview Avenue, there are many observation points to view the beautiful views of the city. There are several circular overlooks that have been built that actually extend over the edge of the hill to provide a more encompassing viewpoint. This is definitely a popular area for engagement photos, prom photos, as well as a tourist attraction. And it's also pretty easy to find free parking on a nearby street. This area was originally known as Cool Hill and was settled by immigrant factory makers in the early 19th century. However, the steep hill was so hard to climb so that in the 1870s, several inclines were built to ascend the hill. Today, only two of the inclines still run on a daily basis, the oldest being the Monongahela Incline. The lower station is close to Station Square and is the oldest operating incline in America. The other incline on Grandview Avenue is the Duquesne Incline. This incline is slightly further from downtown and it offers better views of the city. You will need a car to get there as a public transit does not run near the base. Right now we're on Shiloh Street. This is actually the busiest street in Mount Washington just for the reason of all the businesses. You have anything from ice cream shops, bars, restaurants, nail salons, you name it, it's here. 
Me personally, I love to get a drink at the Summit. You can get really good gourmet cocktails and a nice light bite to eat. But if you're looking for something a little bit more filling and lavish, we do have a lot of fine dining restaurants right overlooking the city. Shiloh Street features several bars and grills and more or less formal establishments. Some restaurants include Shiloh Grill, Sesame Garden, Red Beards, and Shiloh Gastro. There are actually 105 different businesses here. This is a street where you can find ice cream, baked goods, ice cold beer, and even breakfast all along the same road. The stunning views on Grandview Avenue is the perfect scene for their restaurant row, which is filled with fine and elegant dining. Some favorites include the Lamont and View 412. The people you typically see living here are adults in their 20s and 30s, some singles, young professionals, college students that rent out the properties, and some families as well. The median home value in Mount Washington is around $303,713. The median rent here is around $1,268. Mount Washington is a pretty affordable place, so it is possible to find living in the $100,000 to $200,000 range. Although, with the stunning views, you will see homes that surpass the millions. Most of these homes were built in the early 1900s, so you will see a ton of finely restored housing here. Lots of new development in its planning stages, as well as homes that have been recently renovated to the newest styles. So a lot of people live here and a lot of people love Mount Washington, mainly because of the affordable pricing. You have a booming business district and then the most beautiful views that you're going to see anywhere in the city. I honestly like that everything is very walkable and it's very centrally located. So if you don't want to do something right on Grandview or in the Mount Washington area, you can take the incline right down to the city. But if you do want to be up here, it has a great nightlife, but not the kind of nightlife you'll see in Southside with the clubs. But there are incredible neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. We just need to find where you're working, what you're looking for, and what type of lifestyle you like, and we will find you the perfect home. In order to do that, you need to reach out, you need to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, DM me on social media, however you wanna get a hold of us. We've got your back when moving to Pittsburgh. Until the next video, see you later.